developing a strong connection with anyone, my 10 commandments. Let's go. First one, thou shalt prepare for the encounter. For me, especially as a chaplain, I want to make sure before I go out and try and speak with people in the hospital, is there anything on my mind? Are there any distractions? How am I feeling? Is this a good time for me to go out? Is there any project on my mind that's got me concerned? Is there any meeting coming up that I feel that I haven't prepared for? I want to make sure that when I approach somebody, I want to make sure that there's nothing that's going to interfere on my behalf. Okay, make sure I've got my mind clear. I have a little process I go through, a little, little meditative process and prayer that I say before I go out. I don't know what your strategy is, but ensure that before you try and encounter someone, you're clearing your mind of any distractions. Number two, be respectful and give choice. Ensure that the other person is ready for this conversation. Okay, not only make sure you're ready, which we did in commandment one, but in commandment two, we're making sure they're ready, especially here in the hospital. I want to be very respectful. People are in their hospital bed. They can't simply get up and run away from me. So I need to approach them as though they're sitting in their living room very respectfully and ask if now is a time they'd like a visit from someone like me. If they don't, I exit. I have seen people walk into rooms and start conversing straight away. It's not very respectful. They don't know who you are. They don't know why you're there. So always introduce yourself. Be very clear about who you are and give them the choice to say yes or no to your visit. Number three, listen with intention and attention. This commandment's very important. So often when we listen to people, we get a gist of what they're trying to say to us. And then we're formulating a response. It could be something they're sharing with us. And we're thinking, oh, yeah, I've done that or I know that. And you're looking to share. So I, I switch off listening and I start getting my response ready. Try not to do that. Try just to sit in the space of really listening to someone and pay attention to what they're saying. That's really important. Pay attention to their body language and whether it's matching what they're saying. Okay, sometimes people are saying something, but their body language is not matching. Sometimes people are saying, no, that's not how I feel. Stuff like that. So be attentive to that sort of stuff. The next commandment, commandment number four, manage your own triggers. When you're encountering people, it's not uncommon for strong emotions to come up. Be aware of that. Try as far as possible to not let that interfere with the conversation. And if you're aware that something's come up in the conversation, for goodness sake, at a later time, sit and ask yourself, why? Why did that come up in that conversation? What was I responding to? It's their life, not mine. And yet I had this strong reaction. Why? It's really important. It's going to help minimize the impact of these triggers on these important conversations that we're having. Commandment number five, thou shalt respond with empathy. Guys, that's the secret of a strong connection. Try and convey to someone, I understand, I hear you, I understand, or I'm striving to understand what this is like. It's so powerful for someone when they go, I don't feel alone anymore. You get it. I feel heard. I feel understood. Thank you. Because virtually no one else in their life is doing that. Respond with empathy. Commandment number six, thou shalt not ask questions and contain curiosity. Guys, I've spoken a lot about this. There are many, many occasions when asking questions are fine. Okay, in fact, very appropriate. But when someone is sharing something really meaningful about a traumatic event or a loss or a grief that they've suffered, that's not the time for questions. Contain your curiosity. You don't have to know everything about this particular situation. It's enough that someone is inviting you into their world and sharing something very painful and very precious to them. So respect that. Don't ask questions. Just be there, hear them, and respond in a way that says to them, yeah, I get it. Okay, commandment number seven. Thou shalt not provide solutions, fixes, suggestions, platitudes, silver linings. So important. I know you want to help. I know you would love to make this person feel better. I know that. But you can't. So stop trying to do the things you can't do and do what you can do, which is listen and convey understanding. That's what we can do. So 
knock that other stuff on the head. That's fine in other sort of conversations like social conversations, that's fine. But in a deep, meaningful conversation, you really want to contain all of that stuff because it's disrespectful, it's unwanted, and it, it ends these sort of conversations very quickly. Commandment number eight, thou shalt not share similar experiences. You don't need to say to someone who's grieving, for example, the loss of a mother, yeah, I know I lost my mother. You don't need to share that. You can, of course, draw on those experiences to help understand what it might be like for this person. We've all got different experiences, but similar responses because we're human beings. We all have a somewhat similar response when we lose someone as irreplaceable as a mother. Won't be exact, but it'll be similar. So draw on those memories. Draw on those feelings you had to offer them to say, yeah, I think I get the impact of this. I think I understand. And, and, and so you can phrase something back based upon your experiences without having to share a similar experience with someone because it takes the focus off them and now takes them away from themselves while you tell your story. Don't do that. Keep the focus on them. Okay, commandment number nine, thou shalt focus on the other. Well, that's what I was just talking about. That's what this conversation is about. So whilst I'm seeking to convey to you that I understand that, I want my responses to be short and sweet. I want to keep the focus on you. I want to make sure that you're sharing everything you want to share and just letting you know that I'm listening and I'm understanding and I can do that with short responses, with looks on my faces or sound. If I sit out of song, oh my goodness, that conveys a lot. I haven't said much. I haven't done much, but I'm conveying to that person. I'm with you. I'm hearing you. This is powerful and it'll be powerful with them and powerful in building a connection. Commandment number 10, don't argue with someone. If someone says to me, um, you know, my child died and now they're an angel in heaven. I don't need to say, uh, actually, that's really not correct as far as angelic epistemology goes. Um, they're a different species to us in a sense. They're created on a higher plane of existence than us. Um, we may, if we go to heaven, spend eternity surrounded by angels, but we'll never be angels and they'll never be hum human beings. We're, we're separate in, in, you know, in that sense. Now, look, whether that's true or not, I don't know. That's, I, that's what I believe. But if someone else believes that a loved one has died and now they're an angel in heaven, that's okay. I can let that slide. It's not on me to correct their theology. If whatever's true, one day we'll all know. And I'm happy to wait till then. I don't feel the need to correct someone's theology or correct any other little mistake they make when they're sharing something deep and meaningful to me. They're my Ten Commandments, guys. It helps me build a strong connections with the people I meet in the hospitals who are going through very difficult and trying circumstances. I can't see why it wouldn't work for you. God bless. Thanks for listening.